disconnect switch, okay? That's what disconnects the batteries in general off, okay? Only time you're really gonna be hitting that switch off and turning it off. Now, the way you can tell if it's on or off, if it's green and also we have power inside this code, just means it's active. If you hit it, it's gonna go gray and then you're gonna notice everything shuts down. That's just typically when you're shutting off the batteries and you're gonna store this unit. So if you're planning on storing this unit in a garage, in a storage facility, and have nowhere to uh, plug in, so that's considered dry camping, or dry storage, I apologize. Um, then from there, disconnect us so and nothing keeps drawing out of the batteries, okay? So you'll come back to a dead battery. You wanna make sure you shut down everything so you don't say, oh, I accidentally let the light on, or you accidentally left the refrigerator on, you meant to shut it off, and it doesn't just keep draining that battery, and then you come back to a dead battery. Only time you leave that on majority for storage if you have somewhere to plug in. So a 30 amp, a 50 amp, even a 110 outlet or 120 outlet. Leave that on because that enables a charger so that at least your battery stays nice and charged. No matter what plug in you plug into. How long would you need it to be off in order for that to make sense? Like so typically, yeah, like if you're going to be month. storing this for more than 24 hours, oh. I would just go ahead and shut it off because the yeah. thing with, with battery states of batteries, right? Think about your cell phone. You fully charge a battery, even if you shut it off and you put it in a drawer, a week later you come back to it, it's still dead. It's just the nature of battery for a, a battery to deplete itself. When you disconnect the battery, it gives you more time with it, so it slowly depletes itself, but it's not as fast like if it would have a draw. That's why they said for dry storage, just disconnect it, so at least nothing's hard and drawing out of those batteries, but then you have to constantly replace your batteries because they're either dying too quick on you or they just aren't. One of the cells inside the batteries aren't themselves. If you have somewhere to plug in, it's probably the best ideal thing to do because you're exercising that battery. It's getting the charge, it's using the battery, and then constantly putting it back in with the charge, whether that's a 120 outlet, a 30 amp, or a 50 amp. Okay, and you said unplug things as well or instead of? No, you could just hit, hit that, that and it shuts everything yeah, off okay. the unit. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. it all, everything that's in this unit is tied to the batteries. Okay, so the moment I hit that off, you're gonna notice everything shuts off. Of course, granted, not LP related stuff, but all electric stuff. Okay. Besides that, above that, you're gonna have a bunch of light switches throughout the unit. Okay? okay. First one here is gonna be, of course, the ones inside the cabinetry right there. One next to that's right above the dinette or the booth area, I would call it. Next one out here is gonna be your porch light. We hop out here, you see this little kind of LED light that's right there above the door or the door light, I guess you can refer to it. And then the last one here is just, you do have a curve light. Where's the curve light on this one? They always move it around. Actually, this one's not a curve light. That's gonna be this one now. They moved it over, so this one does not. I keep forgetting this is a, a international. So these are gonna be inside lights. Oh, I see. You do have an awning LED light switch and a main stand light that's all right above it, and those are labeled for you. Those have dimmers on them as well. So if we do the main ceiling lights, all right, show you where those are located, just down the center portion of the unit. The toggle switch to the left, if you start dropping it down, it dims them down for you. Nice. Not every light in the coach has dimmers, just only those, okay? And the next one is awning, and of course there's a dimmer on the awning as well, okay? With the zip the awning, that is your automatic awning system, okay? You notice there's a master switch there that's on and off, okay? Leave that on if you're going to be using the awning, okay? This has a seismic sensor built into it. So it's going to have that motion sensor where it's going to bring in the awning if it's way too much wind, okay? Oh, so if we're outside with the, with the awning out and it starts getting really windy, it'll automatically pull it in? Mm -hmm. huh. Yep. So all I did now was hit open, and from there, it automatically starts reeling itself and then it stops because you see how it's already starting to wind up a little bit, yeah, so sure. it's going to stop because huh. it's preventing itself from saying, wait a minute, I'm seeing a lot of those wind. Those are the LED lights that you're Correct. talking about that yep. are on this second dimmer? It's on the top. It's labeled awning and then dimmer, so you toggle that up and down. Cool. There you go. So you can see, when it was bringing itself out, the motor's engaged, but it was like, wait a minute, because it already started bouncing due to the wind. Wow. The sensitivity of that sensor is pretty, I would say it's pretty sensitive. Yeah. So it's gonna just do it once it starts seeing some fluctuation because it's seismic. It's not necessarily due to like a wheel spinning or anything. It has to be bounced. Or it'd be like, okay, I gotta bring myself in. I'm not gonna let myself fully extend and potentially tearing up the awning. Typically, only times I recommend guests using awnings is like a sunny day, it's not really windy, and it's mostly meant for shade. Don't use it when it's raining, because even when rain comes, a gust of wind comes out of nowhere, it can easily tear up the awning itself. Doesn't have enough time. 
to retract inwards. If you notice the motor when it was kicking out, yeah, so it, it cooked out. It's still barely moving because it, it, it's a lot of fabric to reach outwards. Okay. Then if you notice two other switches underneath there says tilt. You can tilt this awning in certain directions, whether the front side or the rear side of the awning. Just for drainage, so say in the mornings you guys brought it out, humidity from like the roof was spilling onto it, you could drain it away from the door or tilt it to a different location. Okay? For traveling, what I recommend is shutting off the master switch, okay? Just always leave it off so there's no physical way that can move. What ends up happening is some guests will leave stuff on the couches or something and they'll accidentally hit it. Like, they'll, going down the road, they'll bump into it and the awning will try to bring itself out. Leave the master switch off so nothing is going to make, uh, make that awning come out. Alright? Makes sense. So far, so good?